In this video, we continue our late fall trip as we leave Auburn and boondogging and travel down to Mobile, Alabama for some beautiful sunsets. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbing. And hey, Love Subbing, we're on a sub. We're on a sub, USS Drum in Mobile, Alabama. Yes, we're continuing our tour through Alabama, stopping off at, the, you know how much we love history, mm -hmm. and ships, and aviation, and, and this place is a treasure trove of it. Oh, so much of a treasure trove, I think I almost got lost. Yeah, we lost Cindy in the battleship Alabama for a while, but we recovered her. Yep. And so in this episode, we'll see a little bit of the uh, memorial here. At the USS Alabama as well. Check out our campsite at Mayer State Park. Which is only five miles from here. And we'll do some lunch. And, and we'll do some local lunch. Local food and etc. And we'll try some regional cuisine here as well. All right, let's hit this episode. All right, I'm really going to have to contain myself, but I think I can do it. There's Cindy going up. So we were told by one of the volunteers here that this ship has sunk itself into the mud, which makes it able to be preserved a little bit better than some of the ships that are still floating. We'll judge how well I am at my signal flag capturing with November Echo Romeo Whiskey is what I'm thinking. Through the magic of my iPhone, I was 75%. It is actually November Echo Mike Whiskey. So, um, yeah, so I got three out of the four. <clears throat> We're on the focus hole here and what is some, the focus hole? Is that the, the, the bow, right? The bow, yep. Okay. And getting some cool shots of the Alabama mounts. Nine 16-inch guns. We're seeing some of the forward ones. The big ones. And with the bridge in the background. Yep. And another cool for vexologists. A Union Jack, which is only flown on the bow, a special bow staff. You can't fly that flag anywhere else except from a staff on the bow. Is that an official USA flag? Yep, yep. And look, the 16-inch shell is bigger than Cindy. Imagine this thing, 2,700 pounds, being shot like 22 miles this thing could go. This just shows a good look at the different air defenses that the Alabama had. You had its 5-inch guns, its 20-millimeter guns, and where Cindy is, the 40 millimeter Bofors. So if you're staying at Mayer State Park, which we are, it is only five miles from here. And it's a straight shot towards Mobile and we just travel on that bridge over there. And there's a lot of cool seafood restaurants on that bridge as well that we might be hitting one on the way back. I think we will be. What are you standing next to? Um, 45 millimeter gun? 20. 20, okay. So I remember reading in one of my books how the sailors that were in the vessels weren't able to see what was going on outside with regards to aircraft and stuff like that. When they heard the five inch guns going off, they were pretty confident that any kamikazes or any uh, aircraft were quite a distance away. But then all of a sudden, once they started hearing the 40 millimeters going off, the Bofors. That means they're closer? They're getting closer and they're starting to get worried. And then by the time the 20 millimeters are going off, they're like, uh oh. Does things that mean are getting. Uh... Enemy aircraft. So those are the close in ones. Okay. Back during World War II, they'd be like, uh oh. They can keep going up. Really? So this is about as high as we go, but I would say that they don't have any elevators. And so I think if you want to go up high, you're going to have to be fairly agile and watch your head. Busy here. Okay. Uh, Cindy got kind of sick and tired of the smell and the stairs, so uh, I'll show her the bakery. This is probably where she would have been had she, well, she wouldn't have been in the Navy in the 1940s, but on a battleship, but this is the bakery. Big mixing machine there. And all the ovens behind me. And some tables for rolling out your dough. Cool. Here in the Chief Petty Officer's mess and they show all the different ratings. Some of them, of course, you're familiar with, a gunner's mate, fire controlman, signalman. This one. Specialist athlete. Huh. <clears throat> okay, I found Cindy. <laughs> we uh, got separated and we're texting in a battleship. So to know, you can still text within a battleship yep. and find each other. Where were you? You were in the warrant officer's area? 
post office area. Let's go check this out. So it's just funny because I couldn't find, I didn't know where you were, and I was in everybody's way. So here's something that was really interesting that I read about, and it's called V-mail. And they put this together for people sending letters back home from their places of deployment. And it was a method of preserving your letter. You wrote it on this special type of paper, and they recorded your letter onto some film, like you would push, like in a motion picture. And they would deliver this film, and on one piece of film that was this big, they could put 1,700 letters. And the point of this was these letters by themselves would fill big bags of storage space, and they wanted to use that storage space for other things like that were more important, like armaments and stuff. But they still wanted to let those letters get back home. And so they would still send these film rolls back home and they would take pictures of these rolls and put them into the envelopes and then send them to their addresses. Wow, that's kind of an early form of uh, email kind of sort of or whatever. Absolutely. So it was really interesting the way they developed this process. So this section is called the Gidunk or Gidunk or whatever. Um, <laughs> but, but big ships like carriers and battleships that were on had facilities for making ice cream, for soda and stuff like and that. And for preserving it in freezers as well. Yes. And there's always a story that whenever like a submarine or a destroyer would recover an aviator that may have crashed on uh, and return that aviator to the carrier, there was always in return ample tubs of ice cream supplied by the carrier to the submarine uh, crew for returning their shipmate aviator. And so it was a big deal. Behind me is a really unique aircraft. And we all know that Air Force One is only called Air Force One when the President of the United States is aboard. There's also Marine Corps One, which is the helicopter typically flown by the President. But there's also an Army One. And this was uh, President Reagan, actually. They have a picture of President Reagan flying in this helicopter. So, uh, yeah, there's an Army One. I wonder if there's ever been a Coast Guard One. Need to research that. So like most submarines, this is a very small space and uh, the doors are small as well, but they do remind me a little bit of Airstream doors. <laughs> How do they remind you of Airstream doors? They're, they're sort of shaped the same way, right? Uh, okay. Through at speed. <laughs> I think that's how it's done. <laughs> yeah, Cindy commented the shower is the officer's shower and about the same size as what's in our Airstream. <laughs> this looks like the sink that we had on our Amtrak train room at. Yeah, it does. Kind of dumps in like that. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Check out that video. I think I'm doing pretty good this year. This is my third SR-71 of the season. So one was at the uh, Warner Robins Air Force Museum. The other one, well, technically was an A-12 at the uh, Huntsville Space and Rocket Center. And this one. Number three. And if this is the greatest collection of fighter jets ever, I don't know what it is. You get an F-A-18, an F-16. And F-15, I don't know what that is. It's got two MiG-21 stars on it. That was with the Israeli Air Force or something. Okay, as I was editing this video, I was like, wait a minute. There is no way the Alabama Museum is going to display an Israeli F-15. So thanks to the wonders of the internet, I was able to do some research. And you can actually look up every single MiG that was shot down during Operation Desert Storm. And sure enough, Thomas Dietz, call sign Vegas, operating as 0 x 53 on February 6, 1991, shot down two MiG-21s. But you're not going to put one by Love Subin. Being a detail guy, you'll note that the bureau number for the airplane that actually shot down the MiGs was 79-078, and the bureau number for the airplane displayed is 75-045. So it's not the same plane, but it's painted to look like Vegas Dietz's aircraft. And of course, the F-14 from VF-31. And though it may be a battleship park with a submarine, kudos to this museum for including the United States Coast Guard. You know the fan that I am of the Coast Guard. And they've got a nice little display here of a 41. I think that's an HH-53. Lifeboat, awesome. Okay, I was wrong, it was an HH-52, not 53. <laughs> So when we were at the U.S. Rocket and Space Center Beer Garden, we sat next to a couple and had a great time with them, right? Uh-huh. We got a good restaurant recommendation as well. This gentleman literally said this was, this was the best food he had ever had in his life. Yes. 
That's a pretty steep recommendation. It is. But we got some other recommendations too, like the Bluegill, right? Yep, which but is they're, they're actually owned by the same uh, company or yeah. organization. But we have to honor our friend Tom there in Huntsville yep. and eat at what he considered to be the best ever. Plus, it looks like the Sloss video. Yeah, it does get that Sloss kind of rusty, good looking look to it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, check out that video here and we're before gonna check we go this, on in. And we're going to check this out. All right, see what you get. I got the raw oysters and the little corn and crab fritters. They look like hush puppies. So we're gonna give the oysters a shot. A little bit of cocktail sauce. Make sure the oyster is loose. Those are fantastic. <laughs> They're good? Mm. Super good. What makes them so good? They just have a really nice flavor, very, very nice seafoody flavor. And these little hush puppy things were really excellent as well. So what did you end up getting? Yeah, so I'm on a quest, of course, to get the world's best fish taco. I'm always looking for the world's best fish taco. So these are interesting in that they're... A hard shell. Hard shell. Let me give them a shot. Mm, very good. A little bit of sweetness, very full. Excellent, very, very good. And some gumbo soup. Mm. That's spectacular. You gotta have gumbo soup down south. Absolutely. So how does the fish taco rate against some of the others <coughs> you've had? Mm. I think more research is needed. <laughs> So final assessment, very, very good oysters. The gumbo was incredible. So it has inspired me to go back to the Airstream and try to sort of replicate that with whatever I have in the Airstream. Plus we got some pecan pie to go and we'll assess that as well. So we're staying here at Mayer State Park and we asked how to pronounce it because we were kind of calling it Mayer State Park, but it's Mayer State Park in um, Spanish Fort, Alabama, which is kind of a cool name, but it is actually the closest state park to Mobile, which you can kind of see. There it is right there. And we are on the causeway to Mobile. Yes. As opposed to the Bayway. Is it the Bayway? I think they call it the Bayway is the uh, I-10. And I, you know, the only downside to this, ca this campground, I'm loving this. Big open sites, asphalt pad, Super level, no leveling blocks needed. The only downside would be that you've got I-10 as Cindy pans the camera around the other way. Well, it, it, it's, it's interesting because the road noise, you hear it, but it's such a beautiful view when it gets dark too. We'll have right. to show We're you that. Show that. Sunsets are absolutely gorgeous. Every night has been a beautiful Every night sun. has just been a crazy wonderful sunset. There is no open fires allowed here, so you can only put an open fire in the little grill pit. Um, open fire defined as a like fire. a campfire. You like can't really have a campfire. You've got to have that. So a grill is not a problem. Right. So you can see this pad here with all the services. It is 30, 50, 20 amp. Pretty standard. Yep. Uh, we're not boosting, so the auto form is doing good. It is full hookups, which is great. Uh, the water came in at 55 ppm, a total dissolved solids. And yeah, full hookups. You can't beat that. The bathhouse right over there we'll probably do some laundry and they have a laundry mat there yes and you said it was like only a dollar for a load. A dollar for a wash a dollar fifty for a dry i think not bad so yeah oh, we're, we're this is a great state park we'll leave the cost right here I and think this is like a cancellation is. camping absolutely i mean this is another one of those whereby i've been looking i've been looking and then bingo one site right on the water popped up and i nailed it in fact the site we're moving to Next is also going to be a very similar thing. So this is, how would you rate the state park amongst all the state parks we visited so far this, this is year? This is going to be up there high. Is Again, this our, is going to be hard for the Love Subby Awards, I think. Yeah, the, we've Look, stayed at some wonderful places and we're continuing to stay at wonderful places. So yeah. It's going to be a hard decision for the Love Subby Awards, I think. So I, I like the little fact that they took the extra time to put the water spigot in a cup 
when they did the whole concrete pad thing and then put some grass around it. It just makes it seem cleaner for some other reason. I don't know why, but it just gives it a nice vibe. And for those who thought this might have been cycled out, they have put it back in place. So this is a long tradition and it's great to have it back. Free orange juice at the border. Free orange juice and grapefruit juice. Yes. So you have a choice. So a little tip on the way, if you're on I-10 going east, there's a Bucky's about yep. 15 miles from the Florida rest area. So it's a great way to have lunch is to stop off at Bucky's, get your sandwiches. They do not have picnic tables at Bucky's, but they have nice ones here. At the Florida rest area. So that concludes our Alabama trip, huh? It does. We're, we are starting a new trip into Florida, right? Yep. You can see the Blue Angels out there. So we're near Pensacola. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we had a great time in Alabama. Oh, it was gorgeous from and so interesting from one end to the other. From Mayor State Park in the sunsets all the way to Huntsville the and the U.S. Space and Rocket Center with in between. With our SEC game at Auburn with Boondocks. Exactly. So we had a lot of fun. War Eagle. Yep. We lost our coach after that game. Well, but whatever. deservedly so, I think. All right, on to Florida. On so to if you Florida. like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click the subscribe. And comment below if you've been to Alabama and what your favorite site here was to see. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.